I've got one. Well, is a new idea sheller unit one of the pool type ones behind a new idea mounted picker? Was that a Moline? No, that was no, their own. No, that was their own. There was a cage design also for a much smaller cage. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was a cage rotary. And, and I don't know. But now uh, I'm it experienced. I know Moline's had a reputation of not cracking corn. Yep. Uh, we had a picker shower my dad had when I was in college and. Uh, uh, I just remember corn compared to what we shout out of the crib by various means coming in on the wagons. It was just there wasn't any cob. It was just clean, no cracks, no fines. It was really good quality, and that's what they claim. You know, the rotaries stay the big one of the big advantages of rotaries is that they they can handle wet grain better than a lot better than the old brass bar combine can. We got a long, longer area to clean it, to right. thrash and clean. Yeah, yeah. Right through. straight through. So you're saying there's some there's some patent that that went from the old 12-pin shiller that shiller into these modern combines international. Well, well the the, the concept, concept or the design yeah, is very design. similar. I don't know what. Uh, they may have had to pay a patent. I know Deere ended up paying a patent yeah, for the, infringement. The, the, the thing of it is to remember, too, there's 1210 shellers out there with white paint and decals on them. Yes, mm -hmm. and painted red and green. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And yellow. And, I'm, and you know, I, I'm guessing, Mike, when you set your sheller, when you were, when you were on the farm, I knew with hand running international accident laws. You could get it to where your cobs were coming out whole and you had it set right yeah. pretty well. Yeah. And so you didn't have to worry about all that cob breakage and all that stuff on your sieves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Open the concaves as wide yeah. as you could. Yeah. We ran popcorn with ours. And there's special adjustments and you know a little bit of extra work you gotta do to do that, but we did it. So well, everyone got their questions answered. <laughs> <laughs> they could be here at 8 o'clock at night. Yet, Mike. Yeah. Well, I've, I've got a question. I've got a 51U uh, propane mini. Do they have long axles on them, some of them? They were available. Because I bought They, one. they weren't standard, no. but a lot of the LPs went into uh, California. Uh, it was popular out there, and they, they for bed spacing, uh, mm -hmm. they had long axles available. Because I could double hug this with a cast iron hub. Yeah, they were. And I couldn't believe that. I thought. Yeah, they had. I don't know. They were, they were something like ninety some inches long. Yeah, because they actually cut the right line down. So I got the parts to go back to originality and glue everything in real close. Yeah. But I could double hug that thing no problem. You know. Yeah. And then another question for my cousin here. They had what a new 602 and 64, but then he put duels on it, the blow bearings wouldn't hang on. Is there anything to a 602 not for being able to use duels? They weren't designed for duels. That that was something that was just starting to come in. And I I don't know how much, how often you uh, are along the last, but it really wasn't designed for duels, but I know people have done it. and. Uh, a lot makes differences to what kind of air pressure you're, mm -hmm. you run, how wide you run them. If you move the inside dual all the way in and keep two or three pounds more air pressure on the inside, it'll go a long ways to helping that bury. Because he always had, I know, uh, Cousin Bill ever said that every year they uh, had to replace either one side of the bearings and the other side when you broke the axle. But now when he came out of the 670s, that's when he changed the rear end, wasn't it? There was, that was heavier, heavier bearings. I think the axle was the same size. I think they changed heat treatment. Okay. But uh, it was uh, bigger bearings. And they, and they could handle the dual where the 602 yeah. I, I've got a guy not too far from me that pulls a 12-row white planter with a 670 uh, <laughs> dual was on it. And they're out, you know, straddle. But, but I heard that they had some design on there that it wasn't quite like the 670s then. Yeah. The, the thing of it is, even at competitors, if they show the tire pressure on the duels, a lot of times they'll do an illustration of the tractor with the duel and they'll show the duel running over a rock or an obstruction in the tire 
actually collapse it yeah. instead of raising the if it raises the tractor up, the pressure on your dual is wrong. Incorrect. So supposedly you have the air pressure, wasn't it, or something? Well that's what, less. That's what we recommend. Yeah. 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 And the other thing a lot of people don't remember anymore is plowing in furrow. About four more pounds of air on that tire. That's a forgotten yeah. thumb on too. The furrow tire. On the furrow tire, yeah. yeah. Because the angle of the tractor is well, yeah. puts more weight on the furrow side. The hardest thing I've had to download lately is when you when you see them plant the corn and you walk by one of these check row planters and try them trying to get from there to here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the corn stalk got far apart now then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the torques on him. I just had a question. The first time I saw the corporate tractor, it looks like a case that came out after that. Is that because the cabs were made by the outside company or what? Uh, the like cab case, design was done by uh, a white stylist. Okay. Or a former yeah. Alvers. They look a lot like the and, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that all was done before the what was it, the 70 yeah, series the case? 70 series case before began. any of us had ever seen a 70 series case. So Case copied it probably. Pardon? Maybe Case copied the idea? Oh, well, the, the tractors never made it production. Yeah. But uh, that design was done without the knowledge of the 70 series case. Okay. And uh, the controls do somewhat look like it, what Case ended up with. Yeah. But Case didn't have all their controls in the console, if I remember right. Yeah. And they, do, they weren't sealed like the corporate tractor design was. They, they were still working through slots. Which let a lot of let dust and noise. noise. Now, another question I have is on the torque. Where did they get the gear ratio so it wasn't so wide like on an M5 or 602? You know, you pull it back on a G1000, you don't even The G1000 Vista torque is a 1.46 ratio. Well, that's what I got my G1000. And, and most G1000s were rebuilt with that in yeah. it. Yeah. But I didn't know that Wheatland torque was amazing. The Wheatland torque. I don't know what it was. Okay. Uh, I assumed it was the one nine, but I don't know. Yeah. But I just know it never really dropped your back very right far. Usually, by the late sixties, you start seeing the gear ratio, the torque change, where there wasn't such a big gap. Yeah. I'm going to say on, on all. There, the there was a, yeah. a very few six seventies and three o twos built in 70, 71 that they actually had the, 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 that the old style torque but a 1.46 ratio instead of a 1.9 ratio so they have a, had a low drop torque they had like g1000 drop yeah i really like that g1000 yeah that's that was really nice for turning you just you don't throttle back you leave your engine running for hydraulics and you just pull the torque flip it around and go the other way <coughs> see another thing is when he <coughs> in the tractor with a diesel they uh, did a serial number check and it's five numbers away from a 67 motor because they did some changing on the top of the motor. So mine's a real late 66 before they came out with the best of it on the motor part. But then I put a 605 motor in it instead of propane. <laughs> and another question I'll ask you is I had that G1000 as a diesel and the kids blew the head gases out of that. And I had that tractor 15 years. I uh, took it into the dealer, and he called me up. He says, you know, there ain't a crack in them heads. But he says, there's another thing. It's it never had no thermostats in it. And I said, I never took them out. And then I did a little history of it, and the guy said, when he bought a new in 66, and the mechanic, the first thing he did is pull the thermostats out of it. Never had thermostats in it. <laughs> that was popular in the field, the idea of it thermostats would cause it to get too hot before yeah. it would open up. And uh, I don't know when, at some point, they put a bypass on there to, so the water would, could, could circulate rather than set in steel. And I don't know, it seems like it was somewhere in the G1000s that started. And uh, uh, the other thing that some people do is drill a hole through the thermostat out not in the pellet but outside of that plate let some, yeah. and let a little bit of water circulate which makes sense otherwise you trap all the hot behind the thermostat <coughs> the little stick or that open and you get hot see i've done that all i mean basically i put a little round of the water yeah. in there 
Yeah, any any bypass is, is good deal. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And then on yeah. my thirteen fifty five it always ran over to the red, you know. So I put an L P one eighty thermostat in there. Now it runs more in the green. Okay. There, there's different settings. Yeah, well the the one the thirteen fifty five <laughs> was uh, uh, the radiator area wasn't needed to really need to be bigger. Well, and then the, I used a, a 504 propane thermostat in there. Yeah, I, I think the 180 or 180. even the 155 or the 135, they all had considerably bigger, wider radiators. And which the Hercules had. guys that I was working with, the 135s and 55s, they said the hotter you can run that engine and not make steam, the better off it is. No, well, fuel I, efficiency, is but not from a wear. Yeah, no, but they, they said if you well, could... I didn't think that you and Kyle used that with more fuel or anything. The <clears throat> if you had the hole in the thermostat, then you wouldn't also have quite so much constant this pulsating shock. Yeah, cycling. Yeah. Yeah, where that you've got hot, cold, hot, cold, and... and, and you well, that it gets pretty uniform by the time it's mixed in the bottom sure. of the head. Moline, the, the three poured entry to the on the six cylinders of the water directed to each pair, basically equally, was a better. Most engines had a one opening at the front, and Ford even got to the point when they come out the turbocharger in the 9000 series, they had to uh, increase the clearance on the rear mm -hmm. on the number six cylinder to keep it from season because it ran hotter than cats too? from the ones in front of them. I think the 3208, 3208 cats had that. The rear cylinders had to be a little bigger too, but I'm not, I know definitely what that 401 Ford block for sure. Two thousandths of an inch on that. That rear cylinder had to be bigger on that. Or they, because uh, my uncle had one overall and it locked up. Oh, they forgot oh, to do that. A lot that. of people that do repairs for on farm equipment are are not full time and are used to automotive or truck engines and they very see, seldom get anything over four inch more and their idea is a thousand and a half per inch diameter piston or about six thousand so on Moline you want a lot more than that you want to get up in the eight to ten thousandths range and on a 585 I definitely recommend ten <laughs> not under ten and the same way on the bearings, you want to get, uh, you want 5,000 clearance on a 585 because they're so big, it uh, keeps the oil from getting so hot. See, I know it's on our M5 and our U one time, the service tower, the gauge go like this. Then you take a, think about a 1 8 drill on the side and that eliminated. Verb to drill the hole. On the, on the thermostat? Yeah, at the side. Yeah, the that, that kept it, rather than wasn't close, opening and closing all the time. Yeah, I, I can believe, believe that. Yeah. yeah. That was a brand new thermostat I put in it. Hey, Mike, I was curious, uh, on the 2655 Olivers and A14-1600s, when they're coming out 585, did they actually put the factory turbo on at the factory? To my knowledge, no. Okay. They, they made a factory kit, but it was it originally was designed for Montana, the high altitude country, uh, western North Dakota, out in that area. Uh, there was a dealer at uh, north of Great Falls that he immediately wanted more power. And uh, they come out after, well, actually after, they, put, they didn't come out with that until, I think it was 73, that they came come out with that kit. And it was after the built factory at built Belton. But the 1400s, the, the 1400 had a, had a field installed turbo kit also. But that wasn't factory. That was never factory. Yeah. But what you did get in the 1400 was a special engine. We, they knew a lot of farmers were going to soup them up because it was low on power compared to where they wanted to go. So they put a tough try to a different heat treatment in the crankshaft, a heavier crankshaft, uh, there were several other changes made to the engine with the idea that the people would turbocharge them. Right. And there are a lot of them out there running. Yeah. Now, was that an MW kit on the 504s? On the 1400s? Right yes. It was, the, it was a different kit for the 1400. Or the, the 504. For the 504 than the 585. It was, it was a different kit. 
when, right. when the case was running the turbo under 451 in the 1200s, <clears throat> they had a lot of trouble with the hot spots on the heads because of the Lenovo injection system. And did Moline run into that too? Or well, some people to say, and you know, you were saying you never found a crack. Some people told me they've never seen a, a diesel Moline head that didn't have a crack in it. <laughs> uh, also, a lot of them say, uh, you know, air test it as long as it's not into the water passage, put her back on and forget it. Yeah. And, uh, but I mean, I'm thinking, I know one farmer in our area that had a 1200 case and they ended up getting rid of the tractor because they couldn't keep heads on it. No, I don't know. I mean, that's not that. Yeah, I'm not an engine designer. Yeah, I just have heard different yeah. things. But see, this guy, the dealership had an old mechanic. He didn't think much of you guys. He said, them god dang engineers, they don't know shit. <laughs> but every time you go on your tractor, he tossed the thermostat for one thing. Yeah. Oh, he's a rough guy. You can't it takes 20 seconds to form a habit and 10 years to break it. <laughs> <laughs> but see what happened our, our, our G1000 they put the motor back together with thermostats, but then I was drying hay and the soft plugs fell out of it. And I didn't catch the room the motor after probably went to a probate. And I sure really went back to the dealer and asked him why them soft plugs came out. Uh, they shouldn't they do that. Uh, Mike, when they, when, when they had the planetary final drive, you know, that whole new gear housing, how come that was developed? Was that in the development when the corporate tractor was going on, or was it afterwards, or what? Why did that program get off the ground and this got scrapped, the corporate? Well, the, the, the planetary final drives come in ahead of the corporate tractor. And then, it, then they used did. the same rear end as a corporate tractor. Oh. Uh, Oliver did the Clark planetary. Well, no, the, the internal planetaries, like we used no, the, the the cor first corporate tractor had internal planetary. Oh, it did. But they did not. It was the tooling was very expensive, and it also was expensive to build. Uh -huh. With a double and twice as many parts. Yeah. But uh, Oliver put. Planetaries on a 1950. Yeah. Basically for the 20 long mm -hmm. and or 2050. Yeah, is what the they external wanted. planetaries. Yeah, yeah, external planetary. Clark, when Moline seen that, they said, well, well we can do, do that. We can do the same thing. <laughs> so they, that was when they started talking back and forth between the engineering departments. And the uh, uh, 1350 used identical planetaries to the Oliver 2150. <laughs> In fact, I think the first five or, or so were sent up, from, they were ordered out, got from down here in General City to put on those first prototype tractors. And that was coming along in 1969, and then when they pulled the plug on the first design, the corporate tractor, and decided to do the hybrid, <coughs> more hybrid tractor <coughs> in the summer of 69, that's when they decided the uh, Moline final drive Bull gears were straddle mounted and pinions where the Oliver were overhung. Yeah. That Moline had a stronger bull gear pinion set up than, than Oliver did. Mm -hmm. And then they would both use the <coughs> outdoor planetary, either one. Oh, but the, okay. So the corporate tractor picked that up. And uh, eventually, you know, when they went back and brought a new tractor out, they went back, went to an inboard planetary on it. Yeah, the, 135, what they called the F30 design, yeah. wasn't it? They called it, wasn't that the prototype? I think so. That's when they brought in new tooling and yeah. did a foundry upgrade for that. Who owned the patent of that amplitor? I have no idea. <laughs> was that patterned after the over under? That was totally no, different. No, that was completely different. That's what that was ahead of all of her had it under drive. You know, Oliver had the power director, or no. Hydropower. Hydropower. And uh, it was a counter shaft design, yeah. if I remember right. Hydropower was counter shaft, as was the over under. Yeah, well, the over under was combinations. Yeah, combination. counter shaft and, and planetary. planetary yeah. And the Moline was a planetary reduction. Totally. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Oliver had that too. And there was a, a Moline yeah. patent from yeah. the early 50s that talked about replacing the Sprag with a hydraulic pump and just let it control the speed of the 
outer part of the or the spider of the planetaries and could have given the infinite speeds for like real slow speed for a, someone's run a trencher on the back end or whatever and nothing was ever done with that and then 10 well 15 years later all over the APD tried to do the hydromechanical and uh, it was very expensive and complicated and had control issues and it was what in the 90s before ZF put it in production in Europe. Yeah. Well my dad was an implement dealer for 56 years and we sold more ample torques to international dealers than we did to marine people. They put them in international tractors. No. International had their, their early ample torques as some tractor pour announcer said one day it was the most profitable part of international harvester business. Or dealer business. I, I buy was a marine, fixing the ample torque. Yeah. And we were selling them hell for in three four states. Of course, we were servicing Del Monte tractors. They had two of them on. Yeah. I think if you look in a parts book, there are some other company names involved when you start looking at the parts breakdown on an Amplitorque or the PTO would actually too has got some from the same. Sprague Cutches have been around for a long yeah. time. Yeah. 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 They weren't used in ag applications. Are the two stores? Some others. Our mic transmission. We got ours. in an entire factory to wind and beads when something's got to go one way, but it's got to coast backwards. Yeah. That's what they the, they use. Uh, 40s early, uh, the first automotive trans car automatic transmissions use Sprags. Yeah. Are the two torques between an Air National 560 and like an M5 about the same? No, they they do the same thing, reduce, but their parts are not interchangeable other than. Uh, well, I don't know. Apparently, a complete unit is. And I know, I know. In the 560, when you put the clutch in, then it pulls back in low range. It pulls it right. It and automatically it shifts many, uh, in low pulls range. Back low range and gives it a shift. Yeah. <clears throat> Moline did not do that automatically. And then they had an adjustment, but you, you know, Mo Moline or internationally could. Uh, I think international used a uh, basically a single plate clutch. On the ampli or on their torque amplifier, where a Moline used the motor plate, and then you could uh, adjust up like a hand clutch. Right. It was a twin disc parts, just like the. That's a twin disc. The old. Because I always wonder how come you could shift the 560 a lot easier in the Moline. We had both of them, you know, 560. Yeah. <coughs> if you're talking about copying, did you tell me that the D19 Alice ring and pinion dimensions are the same as the 560? Well, the. Drivetrain was laid out to have the same life on the bull gears and, okay. and ring and pinion and, and uh, all the bearings, which they had a big bearing issue. And, uh, but they figured International had it figured out. Yeah, they figured International. What they didn't know, International was using the same parts as the MTA on the first 560s. And they yeah. immediately, you know, it was a matter of months and they started failing. If you, because 560 was one of the first tractors that people took out and plowed continually, you know, they didn't didn't chore with it. It was mm -hmm. at that time that was a big tractor. And, and we had to they, they, they didn't have any wheel bearing problems. Pardon? We had, we had a 560 to 63 model, but we didn't have any Yeah, they, they got when in there finally and did a major upgrade, rebuilt all yeah. the early 560s. See, our dealer in Wallach down here, he uh,